Today we are saving another one of your guys' games. This one was sent in by a viewer named Jay, who was nice enough to put in a very difficult warning into the prompt for his game here. I'll be the final judge about if this is actually very difficult or not. Thank you very much, Jay. Jay goes on to say that he's surrounded by northern invaders as well as a bunch of rebelling subjects to his king, and he wonders if we can get him out of this position and form Greater Poland, which I think he means is the Unite the West Slavs decision. So will we be able to save this game? We're just going to have to dive in and find out. Okay, so we are now in the game and you can see it honestly doesn't look as bad as some of the other disasters I've saved on my channel. Um, if you look down here, you can see we're in two wars, one which you're actually doing quite well in, the Independence War. And then the other one is the big one, oh, great heavens! the War of the Northern Invaders trying to take the lovely Kingdom of Poland. Um, and you can see these guys, of course, have almost 8,000 troops compared to our 2,300 troops. So a big disadvantage there. So those are the immediate problems that we have to deal with. But on the horizon, if we click on our player, you can see we currently have five kids and this one dead son we have here actually had a grandson before he died, meaning that um, if we, if our character was to die right now, our land would actually split into four pieces. So we'll be trying to figure out a way to get rid of some of our heirs so we don't lose all of our land when this character does die. Our long-term goal for this game is to actually finish this decision um, right over here to unite the West Slavs. So this decision requires us to gain all of this land you can see outlined in white here. We would actually only need to take these three duchies over here and then do a little bit of cleaning up right here, like this piece of land that belongs to France somehow. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. So when we do get all of this land, I'm going to consider this game saved. We talked about the short term problems, we talked about the long term problems and the long term goal. But let's take a look at why this happened to you. So independence wars happened, And honestly, this independence war um, doesn't look too tough. Like if this was the only thing happening to you, you would be fine 100% able to deal with it. But the problem is, of course, that you got war declared on you from 8,000 men, and it's for your entire kingdom. So really, to be able to defend against both those wars, you would need to have a much stronger army. Currently, you have 2,300 men, but you're only at a little bit less than half of your total fighting force. Probably because you were fighting some other guys. I don't know what you did. I guess you won a few battles or something over here. The problem is, even if your army was at full strength, you would still have uh, problems with fighting off these guys here because of course they have 7,000 men. One solution to this um, is actually marrying off a ton of your kids. So the bad thing of having your kids, like we talked about, is your land will split when you die. But the good thing is you can actually set up alliances with any of your kids you have. And this daughter is perfect because we will not be playing as her. So she's perfect for us just to ship off to somewhere like Byzantium, if we actually sort by uh, alliance power, I'm pretty sure Byzantium will still be the first one. But you can see we can easily set up an alliance with one of the strongest nations in the area. However, that still doesn't really address the reason why you are so weak. And 5,000 men isn't that weak. Like, I don't want to be mean, but some of these enemies, like you can see this kingdom over here has more men than you. And you have a larger um territory under your belt so that really uh so you really should be having a lot stronger military at this point in the game and the reason i kind of see that this is happening you're way under your holding limit you can see you have room for nine holdings mainly because your character is an absolute beast he has 25 stewardship and 41 learning which is uh two absolutely mental stats and that's really helping to bump your holding limit up so you should really be trying to max that out like you're currently holding your five counties that are in your capital duchy which is the only duchy you're holding also but if you were able to take another duchy under your control and get four more counties under your belt you would pretty much double your military strength and your income so as for right now i'm going to work on either white piecing or straight out defeating these wars and then after that, I'm going to work on getting your land a little bit better organized. 
um, maxing out your domains and getting your lands developing because right now if you look at your capital uh, you only have two development which is absolutely tragic like you're 90 years into the game and these lands are just atrociously bad i know you're playing as tribal so it doesn't matter as much but two is just it's just embarrassing another reason that your military actually seems a lot weaker considering how big you are is because if we look at um, the control in your lands. You can see all five of the counties you hold personally are at really low control. This is actually hurting you a ton. If we hover over here and you can see your capital is at 40 control and I can see you're trying to improve the control in here. So that's definitely a good step forward. But with 40 control in your capital, you can see you're losing 60% of your income as well as 30% of your men. So if we look at all the counties with low control, you're missing out on at least um, one third to half of your total military power. The other thing to look at is your wife is currently set to manage domain, which helps with your stewardship. But I really only use this if I'm really looking for money or if I need to bump up my holding limit. But since you're actually in a war here with a lot of people, I'm going to switch her over to chivalry because what that'll do is bump up your martial ability by five, making you a much better commander for your own army. However, to remedy the control situation, I would have loved to be able to go over here and switch to the um, authority focus, which gives you, which gives every county that you hold personally plus 0 0.3 per month. And then picking up this serve the crown perk gives you another 0 0.3. Since you're already going down the diplomatic tree, I'm going to have to wait another year and a half around to be able to switch that. Comparing those two perks. You can see right now with our marshal on increasing the control, you can see that's netting us 0.7. If you just have those two marshal abilities, which only cost one perk, you're already gaining the same amount as if you were increasing control with your commander. However, it's in all the lands you hold personally. So it would be that times five. So it's just incredible value. The first thing I'm going to do is actually just let this army uh, replenish its supplies a little bit. They're going to be able to do that pretty well because um, on this farm line, you get a huge boost to your supply limit. And that will actually let them also uh, replenish the numbers that they have over here. First, we'll let this alliance go through with the Byzantines. And we will call him into the war right away. I'm also going to call the Byzantines into the other war just in case uh, they're nearby and I'm in a battle with some of these guys down here. Oh man, it looks like... Uh, the Norsemen got even more allies in this war. 12,000 men now. At least here come the Byzantines, slowly but surely. So I could get this uh, blessed artifact, which actually would give me a little bit of prowess, but this is what interests me. Faith, hostility advantage. That means since I am fighting Norsemen who have a different religion than me, because I'm Catholic, I would actually get plus two in any battle with them, as well as another plus two if I'm fighting in my own uh, controlled territory. So that actually might be worth 50 gold considering we are also making almost one gold per month. We're not losing money just yet. Oh, it looks like my, my Byzantine friends got into their first battle down here. Kill him. Kill him now. So one thing I can do to try to limit my heirs is actually switch our son over here to the martial education focus. And what that'll let us to do, and what that'll let us do is um, whenever he's not a child anymore, we can ask him to join the Holy Order. And he might have a good chance of this because he is low down in our line of succession. And it looks like the Byzantines have joined us here. So I think, um, I think I might have to jump in here and start fighting some of these Vikings. Okay, so it's been a year and a half. I'm going to switch right away to authority focus to help with our control. Because again, that's going to greatly help get our troop number up here. And I am now moving south in order to start fighting the northern invaders because they're actually almost at uh, 100. So I am cutting it close. Okay, so we did hit 100 in our first war, which is pretty huge. That means I get to lock all of these vassals away. Uh, I could revoke their land right now, but I think I'm just going to hold off. I'll focus on this war right now, and then I'll kind of do the whole land uh, redistribution thing with all of these vassals who are now in jail. Hello darkness, my old friend. Okay, it looks like our forces are all ready here. Oh yeah, I called in um, the king of Bavaria into this war as well. 
Um, it kind of worries me of how far away these guys are standing from us. Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? But I'm kind of liking our odds, I'm not gonna lie. You can see that these guys all are on really low supplies. That gives them a huge decrease in their damage that they do, as well as just straight up attrition. And I am leading our own army and I am kind of a beast. Pretty much the whole war pretty much depends on this battle. Okay, so you can see these guys are really trickling in here, which is bothering me a lot. But the only good thing is we do have a quite a good um, advantage modifier, and they somehow have a rank 3 commander running their army. Okay, it's actually looking pretty good. This is crazy. Okay, look at this. We should win. We lost almost 2,000 men, but they lost over 3,500. And that's really the point of winning battles. You don't want to win battles where you're losing more men than them. Because that'll just put you in a worse state for your next battle. So that was absolutely huge for this war. And now as long as our allies don't leave us, we should be able to win. 12 seconds later. Okay, so some crazy things happened. The Byzantines got called to their own war. So they completely abandoned me. So that's like 7,000 men we didn't have access to anymore. There were some stragglers up north from this big army. So I chased them up north, got some good kills on them. As you can see, we stacked like um, three Triple small kill. armies. And now it's just me and my Bavarian friends. This is a good portion of the, of the Norse invaders army. And it looks like they're coming to attack me on this tile. And you can see we have an absolute crazy advantage from this tile here. So let's see them come in here. So just like that, we killed a ton of men while barely losing any. My army is also replenishing quite strong because our control is increasing really fast ever since we were able to switch over to the authority focus. Okay, looks like we have more stragglers over here. I'm gonna try to run in and get them. You can see that's pretty much a free 700 kills. And now their army is down to just 4,400. We can pretty much take them on our own. Okay, so you can see both my armies are at um, 94 out of 100 supplies, meaning I should be able to run over here and absolutely spank these guys. Let's see. Okay, we caught one army at least. And we have the perk uh, available for Marshall, so we can pick up Serve the Crown, which is going to help increase our low control even faster. Because you can see some of these areas are at 17 only. Like, that is brutal. I just had another two big victories here. You can see we stack wipe those guys, and we get 700 kills over there. And we finally turned the war score into our favor. Hello there. We actually got a pop-up pop for our son to join a holy order so that's perfect because that's what we wanted him to do anyway when he turned 16. So we're finally up to almost 50% in this war and I think it's about time we are going on the offensive for the first time actually. Um, I'm gonna try to just run in for their capital. So if we are able to take this we should pretty much get this to 100%. There we go. So we successfully defended both of the wars, and not only did we defend against them, but we actually got them to 100%. Okay, so we are finished that war. I'm going to sit back just for a little bit and let our troops replenish. You can see we will fill out to almost 10,000 troops, and we still have the exact same counties that we were holding at the beginning of the game. So that just really goes to show you how important control is, because the only difference from now and the beginning of the game is we are at full control in all five of these counties. Um, which we're holding personally. Actually, we're still not at full control here, so I'll go ahead and put my my marshal on increase of control here. That should soon bring us to 10k. Something that we'll definitely have to do no matter what is take away um, this land over here from these from France and this small county. 
and it looks like France is in a lot of trouble right now. They only have uh, about 1,000 men with two wars already being declared on them. So I don't think I'll find a better time to try and take this land away from them. Unfortunately, it, unfortunately these two counties are from different duchies, so I can't declare war for both of them at once. So I'll have to do one at a time here. Having onagers will greatly increase our siege progress, especially against all these tribal regions that are nearby. And it looks like our vassals were actually able to take um, this other county here themselves, so that's very helpful for me. Oh, and it looks like my vassals are already declaring war on this whole duchy over here also, so that's a, another great help. So what I will do is go over here and declare a war for this duchy, and then I'll have to do the same um, with Pomerania just after that. So over here, it looks like this big army is going to come fight me on this tile, so I've already put a rally point here to raise extra men just in case they come for me. Yeah, and it looks like they are. I'm going to raise some more men here to use as backup. And look at that. See, they saw this other army and they would have already known that they had no chance of beating me. So it looks like they're retreating. Get back, hmm, annoyingly enough, it looks like France actually built up a little military of their own and took back this piece of land that was in our north. And it looks like we should win. We're actually going to catch them disorganized. Excellent. Okay, so that brings us to 100% in the France War at least. I had a new son here um, with my wife who was like super old, so kind of a bummer that we have another heir we have to deal with, but what it did let me do is actually set up an alliance with this guy. I just shipped my kid over there. That will get rid of this um, independence faction just like that, which is pretty huge because I am already fighting. We are already fighting this duchy here, so I don't need an independence war coming at the same exact time. Um, it looks like we have some northern invaders coming for us for Pomerania. Definitely not good, but considering we have 10,000 men now, as you can see, uh, we should be able to hold them off. I'll just try to finish this war first before I head in there. Okay, so I just finished this war over here for that duchy, and I think I will hold all these personally, at least just for now. Um, of the northern invaders, there's like 9,000 of them. 7,000 are actually just um, tribe... Uh, levies which are like pretty easy to kill so i think if i go over to our capital replenish our forces a little bit and then um raise the rest of my army we should definitely be okay okay so here you can see i raised all my army and i think actually if you look at this we can actually do a double battle which is kind of sick Let's watch this play out. You don't see one of those every day. So we reduced their size by half already. So I don't think I need uh, as many levies as I have raised right now. Oh man, there is a lot of wars happening in this game. We have another war declared on us, but this time with uh, a religious rebellion. So that's annoying, but not awful, because it's only 5,000 peasants, it looks like. So I just jumped in here with these peasants, and we should be able to kill them pretty easily. Nice. How are we at 50%? Okay, there's more. Where are the rest of the peasants? Ah, these guys, man, they're annoying. What is this, another peasant uprising? Man, this is getting irritating. That's a lot of damage! Gotcha, bitch! Ah, oh, there's the last of the peasants from this other one. Okay, so once we get these guys, we'll definitely be finished. They're dead. Every single one of them. And not just the men. But the women, and the children too, they're like animals. So now hopefully that's enough of the defensive wars for at least a little bit of time. I would like 
um, some time to at least think and plan of what I'm going to do next. So what I'm at least going to do with all this money and prestige is buy some more buildings in these counties um, where my capital is. The reason I'm going to do that is because investing, if you buy the tribal buildings, they'll actually get upgraded to the feudal ones once you switch. These tribal buildings are actually really powerful. Like these war camps are better than any of the military buildings you would get in the feudal one, at least for the tier one. The advantage of feudal buildings only comes because you can upgrade it like 10 times. So it's only around like tier four, I want to say, where the benefits outweigh these tribal ones. And that's kind of why in the early game, you can have these crazy tribal realms that have so much military and are so strong that even you as an early feudal age uh, realm, you could have a lot of trouble dealing with them. So what I'm going to do is pick up uh, war camps. Well, the first thing I'm going to pick up is markets. Anywhere we don't have markets because like it's a pretty good value for your gold income. If we already have a markets, I'll pick up a war camp. And if we have neither of those, I'll pick up uh, the gathering halls. And even if we do have a good amount of gold left over, it's actually not the end of the world because it's not like you lose it on death anyway. Like this will just get transferred down and you can always invest it at any time. So I honestly don't mind having a gold surplus. So I know I said I was sick of wars, um, but I think I might do a triple war here just because these guys are weak. This is a tiny county and this is a tiny county. So we should be able to get all of these. Another one. Another one. That was easy. I love that 100% after literally two seconds. So that's one war done already. Once I take this one, that'll be that one over, and then I can go move and deal with the war in the north. Number two done. Okay, so once we take these guys' capital, it should pretty much be over. Okay, so 100%. All those three are done. So I can do a holy war for this duchy here, which is, um, this is the exact borders that we need to unite the West Slavs. Nice, so one of my sons actually died, which is good for our succession. Not good for our mental health, but some things are more important than others, I'm not gonna lie. All right, this one's finished. So it looks like France actually gained quite a bit of strength here, mainly through alliances. You can see even if I were to declare war on them, they have a max strength of 6,000 while we have uh, 15,000 men on our own. So I think I'll just declare war on him right away. I don't have that much time to fool around, you know, doing murder schemes and all that. And what I'm hoping is they won't even put up a fight for this, for this county. Now that we're actually holding the war target, this is going to slowly tick up into our favor. So I could just wait for this to go all the way to 100 over time. And honestly, I think I will do that because I could march my men all the way over here to fight France, but I can't be asked, honestly. I have to worry about how I'm going to wrestle this land away from the Nords here. So unfortunately for France, it looks like they have sent in some men here. Oh, oh, call an ambulance! Call an ambulance! But not for me! And easy as that. We have one. Ooh, and it looks like we're going to catch them again over here, so that's pretty awesome. Another 2,000 killed. We only lost 300. That's actually quite good. Okay, so we hit 100% with the French. Very, very nice. I think for us, what we need to do next is just go for the war against the Norsemen. Um, you can see they're the strongest, one of the strongest people we have fought yet with 7,000. You can see they're taking me, my land up there in the north, but... Do we want to attack them here? That's the question. Oh man, are you kidding? Another Norseman army? Oh, that's so annoying. Like we're fighting, <laughs> we're fighting so many Vikings already. I don't need more coming back for me. So let's see, I'm going to try to fight them all over here. Um, just before they can cap this point, meaning we're going to get defensive bonuses for fighting in it. And yeah, so you can see, you can see we're getting this defensive at plus four over here. But the main difference is that we are leading this army with a um, advantage of 29. And actually, I might do something cheeky here and actually switch my wife over to chivalry. Because that'll actually boost us to 35, giving us an even higher advantage. 
So let's see how this battle pans out. This guy doesn't even look like he's going to join it. He has no faith in his friends. Okay, so we got them there. And now we can fight their other army. Which is great. <laughs> Another huge um, war score. And that um, advantage modifier really affects how many losses that you get. Boom. So there we go. We successfully took that land. Meaning this is the only county we have left, actually. And we still have a truce with them for... How many years? Four more months. So that's perfect because that gives us exactly enough time to run over here to the north. Which should be quite easy. These guys were very confused. That was hilarious. And there we go. So here we go. It looks like we have one, one county left and they only have 300 men with no allies. So it definitely should be pretty easy for us to beat these guys. Surprise, motherfucker! And there it is. You should you should be able to see that um, purple notification pop up there, which will be um, the decision to unite the West Slavs. As you can see, we have a beautifully large Polish kingdom right now. And I have to say, I think I did quite a good job of saving this game. So you can now see I am holding these two duchies pretty much um, with all the counties belonging to myself as well. And you can also see that the control is pretty much maxed out. Yeah, so I do have 100 control now in all 10 of these counties, which is why our troop numbers are so insanely high. Compare this number with what we were when we started this game only... I don't even know, maybe like 30, 40 years ago. And that just goes to show you how important it is to keep your domains at your max or maybe just one above and to keep the control in all of your domains at 100%. But let's go ahead and just complete this decision. We'll unite the West Slavs. So there we go. We finished the decision. We fought off all those wars. This was a very war heavy episode of Save Your Disaster. Jay, you are perfectly set up here if you want to continue this game. Maybe even go for the decision of uniting the Slavs next, um, which requires you to hold a, a ton of land, I'm pretty sure. I won't actually make the decision for you if you wanted to go feudal or not, because you can have a pretty strong time as tribal, as I showed you, especially if you go and max out all the buildings. And then if you wanted to say tribal the whole game, you could even just go to fortified tribal holds which would again increase your strength by a ton. But you can see you're already making like 20 gold per month almost. Um, a good amount of prestige considering that you're losing a lot for the uh, unraised men at arms. And we even have enough of renown. So succession wise, now that we have, the, now that we united the Slavs, it actually puts all these kingdoms under one de jure kingdom, which is the one that will be passed down to our son. So you can see there's only one kingdom that would actually split off from us, and it's going to this sun here. And personally, I would probably let this happen because it's going to net you a really healthy amount of renown in the long term if you can keep this kingdom alive and uh, with a member of your dynasty in there. So that doesn't bother me. And then you could always disinherit this sun if you wanted. Because again, you have 700 renowned right now. And that way, your first son would pretty much get all of your titles, and you're pretty much good to go. So I think that's going to be it for me this time. Remember, you can send me your games to zlysubmissions at gmail.com. I'll put it on the screen right now. I'll play through the games and even send them back to you. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.